Hello, everybody. How you doing? I just thought, well, I'll try to do a little video for you today. I missed yesterday. I told everybody I was going to do a video, and I forgot that uh, it was Father's Day. We had a little get-together here and a cookout, and my son and my son-in-law and my uh husband and my brother all were here and we had a, and my daughter and her kids and all my grandkids and I had a wonderful day it was so beautiful here yesterday and my littlest grandson's so cute you know he calls me Grenna and he grabs me by the hand he'll say come on Grenna come on let's go walk in the garden Grenna and or go play and he loves that show uh, Masha and the Bear and he dances and I dance with him so he really loves me and it's amazing how much he loves me I didn't think he would you know uh, I didn't get to see him much when he was a baby um, his mom is kind of quiet you know and shy so you know, they didn't really come around a lot when he was first born, and she was kind of protective, I think. But now, boy, he is the joy and sweetheart of my life because he's the youngest one. And I don't think I'll have any more grandkids for a while. So, and the other ones are older. Like, I have a 18-year-old grandson already, and I have a 15-year-old granddaughter, and a... Uh, 13 year old grandson so they're all getting old and uh you know after a certain age those kids don't really you know they love you but they don't want to play like that you know what I mean so when they're little you have to take every opportunity you can to play and I do with my grandkids because it just goes by so fast you guys uh I tell parents all the time, you know, don't try to push it. Don't try to rush it. Just enjoy it because, you know, it's over before you know it. And, you know, I miss my kids so bad sometimes. I have uh, that, what do you call it? I had that really empty nest syndrome for a long time. I mean, I really grieved you guys. I missed my kids. You know, I just, it was hard for me to deal with that. When they were all gone, I didn't see them as much anymore because I was really close to my kids. But, you know, they get their own life and their, their own person. And, you know, you can't hold them forever, but you wish you could, you know. But I still long for the days where I could rock them or, you know, in my arms in the chair or sing to them or just play with them when they were little, you know. So that's why I'm enjoying every single moment of being Grenna. Uh, my oldest grandkids used to call, well, they call me Nina. <laughs> and it's just funny. That's how he pronounces it. So I'm Grenna. But uh, anyways, uh, I just wanted to come on for a few minutes and talk about stuff. I'm not going to, I'm just going to wander around talking about things. I'm, I don't have any specific topic. But I do want to address that there was a phone call going around. People saying that, uh, you know, the, the little boy and Summer were supposed to be kidnapped. And, you know, Summer's no longer around. And the boy watched this whole thing. And. I'm just going to tell you that I don't believe it. And I believe that was a bait. It was set up so that people, YouTubers, would get a hold of that and run with it. And that's truly what I believe. And first of all, somebody just doesn't send a YouTuber a video. They call the, you know, they call the police. They talk to the police. They don't send somebody a YouTube video through email and say hey you know so somebody did that and I don't know who did but you know it was really strange that they said the Holston River and it 
it was almost like somebody took the the psychic stuff and put it together and i also had a dream that summer wells coat was found in the holston river uh my dream was she it was like under a bridge where those white pillars are underneath in the holston river and i in my dream a searcher in yellow rescue a rescue guy was in the water and he had his a stick and he was holding up Summer Wells pink jacket in the water and that was my dream and I never even knew where this dream was and then I started going through videos and I found the place that Summer had been there before that Candace has pictures of her in the same spot I had a dream of and so it's very strange you guys but anyways, um, so I don't believe the call. I don't believe that's what happened to Summer. Uh, that's just my opinion. You can uh, take whatever you want, but I believe it was like a setup so people would run with that. And I'm glad a lot of YouTubers did not run with it because they're smarter than that. You know, there's some good creators that know what's going on. You know, they take a few minutes to think about it before they put that crap out. And then, um, oh, what else? Uh, there was the phone call. Uh, Ernie Shell, uh, I guess he got tased last night, like three times. Somebody called, I think it was Tiffany or somebody from one of them channels called the police on him and uh just because he was walking around all these channels doing welfare checks on people and calling the cops on people just because they're walking the street you know come on they called the cops on ernie when he went up to candace's house and fed them dogs people are just terrible they are bullies and i want to tell you something Oh, about five years ago, I had a bully on YouTube. Uh, I was on Twitter. I'm not anymore, but I used to be on Twitter. And I made a comment about something. And this guy that I did not know started to attack me and say things to me. The next thing I know, uh, he sends me a picture of me, of my mom's house that he got off of Google Earth. And he put his picture in the windows. That's how much of a freak this guy is. And he still has a channel and a bully channel. But he is involved with a whole gang of bullies. And they harass people. And actually three different people committed suicide because of this group of bullies. And nothing's been done. They have been reported over and over to the FBI to uh, all these places, most of the bullies came out of Colorado. But the thing is, my point is, is that you don't know how serious that can become when people just keep attacking and attacking and attacking and bullying for no reason and doing videos about you and doing all these things. It can drive someone over an edge, especially if they have mental issues. Listen, I don't follow Ernie's channel. I don't really know Ernie very well. I don't follow him. I don't follow a lot. Most of these channels I don't follow. I don't follow BK's channel. I have gone over there and looked at his videos. Do I agree with everything he does? Oh, no. I get really mad at him sometimes. Do I think that he has the ability to be a good and decent person? And to maybe do some real content? Yes. I think he's smart enough to do real content. But he needs to get off the bully train with some of these people. And he needs to think about his Christianity because he claims that he knows God and that he is a Christian. Well, if you're a Christian, Benny, then I would assume that you would come away from that bullying because, you know, God sees everything we do. And he judges everything we do. We might just think it's funny. 
or it might just be a prank. No big deal, right? Well, God sees every single thing that we do, you guys. He knows. So it's no game. And I don't care if it sounds cliche, but what would Jesus do, Benny? He wouldn't do that. Jesus said we were to be like him. We're supposed to be loving and compassionate and kind, forgiving. And we're not supposed to go around offending people and doing those kind of things. So that's what I want to say about bullying. It can lead to some really bad things. And Ernie, he was very disorientated. And I don't know if Ernie takes drugs. You know what? It's none of my business if Ernie takes drugs. It's none of my business if any of you take drugs. If any of you been in jail. If any of you have had a past. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. And it has nothing to do with your whatever. Personality. If you want to have a YouTube channel. And you want to talk. That's your right. Nobody has the right to say you can't do that. And so people attacking Ernie just because what? Are they jealous of him? Because uh, there are a lot of people who like him. I have no idea. But I know that I do not like the bullying whatsoever. I think it's horrible. And like I told you guys in my last video, please be careful. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Look, I had 400, I think it was 402 subscribers and now I'm down to three ninety nine because those people, you know, they probably got offended because maybe I said go watch something on Betty's channel. I never tell anybody to go over there and subscribe to them. I know people don't like them, so I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be, uh, I don't, I'm not a cheerleader of any big channel. You know, I don't go over there and, you know, once in a blue moon, I'll make a comment. If I think something's good, you know, I have even to Benny. I've told him when his video is good. And I've also told him when I think things suck, like even today, I said to him that I don't think it's right for people uh, using people's sorrows and failures and struggles uh, to get entertainment from. People's real lives and their personal problems are not entertainment. And you would not like that, and I don't like it. Excuse me, nobody likes it. It's just wrong, you guys. And, you know, I'm just tired of it is all. And I don't mean to sound like naggy or bitchy today, I'm sorry. But, you know, it, it hurts my feelings. And I could not even go watch... Ernie being taste, you know why? That will trigger me and traumatic me so bad. I can't see anybody being abused. I can't watch a TV show with someone being abused, someone being hurt. And I have never seen Ernie bully people. I have never seen Ernie Shell go on channel and start bullying people or doing bad things to anyone. He likes to do his own channel and do his own thing. And I don't know why people can't leave him alone. And it's just crazy, you guys. The bullies. But, you know, it can go over to some real life things. And it can get really bad. I mean, you know, we had Jody Sue. Sorry to say. But she was threatening people. That came to the vigil, saying that they might, you know, get poisoned at a, a walk, at a restaurant. Or they might get shot. Or something bad could happen. That's serious stuff. And people need to quit. And they need to, people, you know, who are being bullied, you need to uh, file a, some kind of report, a restraining order, call the cops on them, something. At least you have a report. Uh, so that you have documentation and you need to start recording these bullying channels every time they do a video so that you have it and you can keep it and uh, use it in court against them. You know, it's wrong what people do.
very wrong. And you know, God is the judge and he will judge. And I don't have to judge you because God's going to judge you for what you do and what you say in your time here on earth. And whether you believe that or not, if you're an atheist and you don't believe in God or whatever, you can guarantee it by my words. I'm telling you, you will answer for the things that you've said and done in on Judgment Day. And you will. So be careful what you say, how what you're doing. And I try to. I even prayed before I came on here today. I'm like, Lord, please help my words not to be bad. Help my, you know, thoughts not to go into, you know, wrong thinking. Because I want to have a right heart with God. I don't want to be, I want to be a good person. I want to love others. And that's what I want you to know about me, too. Uh I'm a very loving person. I will do anything for you. I'm a very giving person. I love to give gifts, make gifts and give gifts to people. That is like my love language. I'm always buying somebody something or giving somebody something. Uh, I would give you anything if you came here and said, I really love that. Because I know that it's just material stuff and we can replace that. But we can't replace people and what they feel about us. And it is important to care about what, you know, people say, I don't care what people think about me. Well, to a degree, that's true. But you should care about what people think about you. Especially if you're being nasty all the time. Or getting into drama. But anyway, so that's that. That's what happened to Ernie's in the hospital. I've been kind of keeping an update on that. Um, I really don't know what's going on with Don Wells. The last thing I heard is that he's in jail and he's supposed to get out in August. So a couple more months. Unless Utah extradites him because he was read his Miranda rights at the Hawkins County Jail. Uh, Utah sent an officer over there, uh, a local, I think it was FBI or somebody went over there and read him his Miranda rights. And his sister wasn't happy, Sonia wasn't happy, Don wasn't happy, because... When they go to press charges on him in Utah, uh, they'll be all set to go. And I don't know if you know this, but Miranda writes, they just do that now. All the police do that now. So in case they interview you for 10 minutes and you say something and you didn't read them their rights and they can't, Go to court and say use it because you didn't read them the Miranda rights. So now they just read them all the time, even if you haven't been arrested yet. So Don was read his Miranda rights, and he may very well be going to Utah. I haven't really heard an update from Mary. If you have, leave a comment. Um, I just appreciate all my subscribers, and I thank you for all the sweet and beautiful comments. And I know I got a lot of great people on this channel. And those who left, I'm sorry. You know, if I made you unhappy or something you heard, maybe my voice annoyed you. Maybe I just annoyed you. I don't know. I'm sorry. I can't help some of the things in my life. I can't help that I'm old. I can't help that my voice is hoarse. I wish I could change it. I can't help a lot of things. No, I don't know how. I'm not really internet savvy, so I don't really know how to do these videos. I got a laptop. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do, and I don't have anybody help me or show me. So, and I got a, um, a web video camera my husband got me for Christmas. I don't even know how to use that. <laughs> So I'm sorry if my videos bore you or you think they're boring or I don't have something important to say. I'm just here. I, I'm 
always on here talking about Summer Wells. You know, she's missing out of Rogers, Tennessee, Rogersville, Tennessee. And she went missing when she was five years old. She's six now. But she has blonde hair and blue eyes. And if you have any information on that, I hope you call TBI Find. Uh, 1-800-TBI-FIND. Or call the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. If you know anything, any kind of tip, you never know. It could be important. So don't think it's not. Um, uh, you know, this... YouTube streets really got me <laughs> all upset, anxiety, and, you know, I'm not used to that. You know who's a nice channel that I really like, and I hope you'll go over and subscribe. Her name is BCD, and, you know, you should go over there and show her some love. This lady is so awesome. You know, like, if you want to see a strong woman, she is, she has... You know, lived out, off-grid, by herself, homeless before, I think. But she has a tent. She's never... She has done wonderful things, and she has great videos. And I think she's a sweet lady, and I think she needs uh, people to go over there and show her some love and get her some subscribers to her channel. Because, you know, there's certain people who need uh, more help than others, and I think she needs some. Um, and to be shown some love. So please go over there and subscribe to BCD. And um, I was trying to think of something else there I wanted to tell you. Anyways, um, I love nature videos with Sheila. I love um, Common Sense True Crime. Crime Mystery Monsters. Um... Oh, I think it's called Case in Point, True Crime or something. I can't remember. Oh, gee. Now I don't remember. But anyways, there's a lot of really nice channels that they don't get into all that drama and they don't get into all that gossip. Oh, Betty Washam. You know, I really like her channel. Uh, Betty Washam. Talk with Betty Washam, I think it's called, or chat. She uh, is a Christian, and she talks a lot about the Lord. And she talks about crime and all kinds of different things. But she's very positive and very encouraging. So I'd recommend that you go, you know, subscribe to her channel. And, of course, Crystal's Crime Time, who I love a lot. And some of these channels are trying to discredit her and make her sound crappy. Well, she's not. And I've never seen her bully anybody on her, her channel. All she does is, like, put out content. And she does research. And she leaves it up to you to make a decision. She doesn't put a whole bunch of her own personal comment in there. And she didn't deserve people uh, tearing her apart. Like, Scott H., he tore her apart. And he lied about her because I was in that community page when that stuff was going on. So he did videos to trash her and be mean to her. And I'm sorry. I just think it's wrong. You know, it's wrong when people start doing that kind of stuff. And talking bad and doing videos about other creators. Do your own thing and leave people alone, you know. You don't got to get involved in everybody's circus, you know. Not my monkeys. Not my circus, <laughs> you know. You don't have to. Just because you're invited to a party doesn't mean you have to attend. And it's the same thing with these drama people. Just because someone enjoys that and they like the chaos and they get excitement... A lot of people get excitement off of chaos. You know, I've even heard of domestic violence survivors, you know, that they struggle. They're so used to chaos in their life that when they finally are free, they don't even know how to react because I didn't know. I had so much chaos in my life. I only knew that. 
And so it's like you crave it. It's like you need that in your life. And it takes you a while to heal till you realize you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that drama. You don't want that anxiety. But you know what I'm saying? You're used to it for so long that you just, you know, I don't know. You just kind of want it in your life. You know, people that were abused by their parents when they were little or someone when they were little, they don't know any other kind of love but abuse. So to them, you know, it's normal. My garden's getting big, isn't it? Look at all them tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, squash, pickles. Yeah. And a ton of raspberries. I want to show you if I can do this. These bumblebees get so drunk off the raspberries that you can pet them. You see me petting them? They will not hurt you. The only time they will hurt you is if you smack them. But all my life, but don't do it to the little ones, the skinny ones, but these fat bumblebees, they get so drunk off of the juices and pollen that they're almost like asleep. You know what I mean? Look at my flowers growing. I love them. I just love them. Can you see all these? Oh, yeah, now you can see them all my... Peaches, the street is loaded with them. We got a lot. I'm trying to get up there so you can see. And we are going to have a ton of grapes, you guys. And I'm so happy about that because I love, I love jelly. And I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I love um, jelly on toast, jelly on crackers. So, yeah. I don't know if you, there's my hydrangea. I can't wait till it starts to bloom. It's so pretty. And, you know, I cut them, but I don't put them in any water. And then I let them dry. And they are so pretty when you let them dry. You know what I mean? Just like that. I love them. But anyways, there's not a lot going on in the Summer Wells case. But I did hear this, you guys. Uh, Plunder, who has a channel, she um, she got a call, and I think it's because they were looking at Don's phone record somehow and Candace's, and they had talked to Plunder at one time to do an interview. One of them did. But anyways, uh, the bank called uh, her, and wanted to know where Donna Candace Wells were. Because they want that vehicle back, I bet ya. So, Candace, the bank's looking for you. If you're watching my video. And it probably won't be long until they find you. Somebody probably knows where you are. So, I don't know if you can hold off till August, till Don gets out. Really don't. Because they eventually do find you. Oh, look, maybe I can get this cute little bird up here. <laughs> so cute, right? I love all these birds. I, my yellow finches are not out, but they are so pretty when they come out. But anyway, so yeah, they're looking for Don and Candace, the bank. And, uh... Uh... Nothing's really going on. I mean, I would like there to be, but there's not. But it's, you know, God has his own timing. I believe in God, and I believe he has his own timing. And though we want everything to be right now, we have to trust him that uh, he's going to do that. And I have prayed, and I do believe, and I have faith in God that he hears my prayers, and he does answer them, of course, when he wants to and when it's time. And I just believe everything will be revealed 
and it's time that we just have to um, just trust God. You know, if we asked him, then we have to believe that we he heard us and that he will answer. You know, there is one scripture that says, he who believes in God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So first you have to believe who he is. And then you have to understand that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So if you seek for God, then he is going to reward that. That's just what the Bible says. And I believe in the Bible fully. I've had a lot of miracles happen in my life. Um, God healed my son. Uh, his father beat him up when he was just an eight-month-old baby. I was gone to nursing school, and he watched him. And his father really wasn't in my life. Uh, he left me when my baby was only eight months old. And then he came back and said, because he heard I was going to get some money. And so then, not a lot of money, but he heard I was going to get some money through one of his friends. I don't know. And then he decided he wanted to come back and be a part of our lives and be a dad, blah, blah, blah. Well, he only watched my son. He was only there two weeks with me, and he only watched him one day. And I went to nursing school, and I come back. It was at night. My class was like from 6.30 to 9.30. By the time I drove home, I got home around 10 o'clock, and he's in the dark. And I asked him what's wrong, and he said, oh, nothing. The baby got sick. And he had him wrapped in my bedspread. And I said, give him to me. And here my baby was seizuring. And I'm like, why didn't you call 911? I'm like, let's go to the hospital. And I knew right then when he told me, he said the baby fell off of me while I was sleeping on the couch. And now he's sick. I knew right then that that was a lie. And, you know, I wouldn't even say nothing to him. I wouldn't even talk to him much because for some reason... I just had the feeling he did something bad to my baby. And so I ignored him. And, you know, when I got to the hospital in the emergency room, he took off and was hiding somewhere else in another part of the hospital. So that even more, you know, confirmed to me that he did something. And I wanted to know. And, you know, in the emergency room, uh, the doctor, I'm out there waiting, crying, trying to figure out what's wrong with my baby. They wouldn't let me stay in there because they were trying to bring him back to life. And the emergency room doctor called me in. He goes, what the hell happened to your baby? Because he had black and blue. He was black and blue from his ankles all the way up to the top of his neck, up his back, his butt. It was black, solid black and blue. And he had burned his eyes with something like Comet, or he rubbed his face across the carpet. And there was so much bleeding on his brain because he shook my baby so hard. And, you know, he's still walking around, laughing it up, enjoying his life. He got one year in the court, in the jail, county jail, and he appealed it for five years. And then he only did six months work release to do and brain damage my baby for life. And my son had to be in the hospital for two years. I was going back and forth. You know, it was the hardest time. And I was a single mom with two other little kids. And I was pregnant. And it was very difficult. And then he had to go to re uh, rehab for two years, physical therapy to learn how to do everything again. But I'm telling you what, God healed my son. They told me he would not live, that he would be blind, that he would not walk, that he would not be okay. And, you know, God healed him, and God helped him to walk, and God did amazing things. The other babies that this happened to that I seen at this big rehab we went to, 
the same kind of thing. Their dads beat them up. Well, them babies were blind. They couldn't eat. And so they couldn't walk. They were in wheelchairs. So I praise God for what he did for my baby, for my son. And now he's 33 years old, and he is the most awesome guy you ever met. He just loves to play his video games. He's always online playing his video games. But I thank God. No, he can't walk very good. He has a he walks with a limp and it's hard for him and his legs hurt and sometimes he falls cuz he's unstable. But he's okay. I mean, he has a mental age of probably about uh some things he can be about a 12, 13 year old. And sometimes he acts like he can have the mental capacity of maybe a six-year-old. Uh, it's just, you know, he graduated from school. He went to a special needs school. and But, you know, he's always been the joy of my life. And re even though it's terrible what happened to him, I wouldn't change him because he's just such a joy. And he's always been so kind-hearted and loving and just such a good guy. I mean, he... He is so sweet. He won't get in anybody's business. He won't talk bad about anybody. He's just a sweet kid, and he'll do whatever you need him to do. He's a good, good guy. And so we enjoy him, okay? But God has done miracles, and he can do miracles. You just have to believe in that, okay? And we have to believe that God has his hand in the summer well situation, and that something's going to come up. But try not to get too upset or involved in the drama. Pull away from it. Pull away from, uh, you know, the goofy stories and things that people want to sh share on YouTube. Because that's, to me, that's all that is. And it's very sad that people do that kind of stuff. I mean... <sighs> Okay, so even if it was true about Summer's brother and all that, how can that be true? Summer's brothers were home. If he was being abducted, you know, and Summer was being abducted at the same time, how can they be home that day and playing and people seeing him playing? You know, I just don't buy the story. So, Anyways, that's all I got to say too much. I can't talk too much because I think I'm going to run out of video. I'm kind of nervous about it. But I'm going to get a card so I can continue on. But I just love everybody. And I just wanted to check in and tell you, hi, I'm sorry I didn't do a video last night. Uh, keep your eyes open. I don't know. I think we're I'm feeling like something's going to happen in the Summer Wells case. I just don't know what it is. Like something's going to happen soon. Something's going to break. Oh, that would be great, wouldn't it? So anyways, I hope everybody has a beautiful day. And enjoy it. And we'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, God bless you. Bye.